This video will cover the steps to set up EDI accounts in Sitka Evergreen. Many libraries use Electronic Data Interchange accounts, EDI accounts, to send purchase orders and receive invoices from providers electronically. In Evergreen, users can set up EDI accounts and manage EDI messages in the admin module. EDI messages and notes can be viewed in the acquisitions module. For EDI to work, your library must have a SAN, and each of your providers must supply you with their SAN. A standard address number is a unique seven-digit number that identifies your library. Please contact support if your library does not already have a SAN. When you first get your SAN, you will need to add it under your library's organizational unit settings. This only needs to be done once per library. In Evergreen, select Admin and select Server Admin, and then select Organizational Units. Find your library from the tree on the left-hand side of the page and click on it to open the settings. Multi-branch library systems will see an entry for each branch, but should select their system's top organization unit to enter the SAN. Click on the Addresses tab and click on the mailing address tab, and then you'll enter your library SAN in the field labeled SAN. Once you have entered your library's unique seven digit SAN number, click on save. You will then need to enter your provider's SAN in the provider's record. Go to admin and select acquisitions admin, and then select providers. You'll want to click the hyperlinked name of the provider you would like to edit. And then you will enter your provider's SAN in the field labeled SAN. Once you've entered the SAN number, you can just click Save. You will need to add the SAN number for each provider that you do EDI with. Once you've entered the SAN in both the library record and the provider's record, you will then need to create an EDI account. Um, please note you must create your provider before you can create an EDI account for the provider. Contact your provider to request the following information. Host, username, password, path, incoming directory, and the provider's SAN. Once you have the required information, you can create your EDI account in Evergreen. Select admin, and then select Acquisitions Admin and select EDI Accounts. You're going to click on New Account and a pop-up will appear. You're going to enter in the following information. So in the label field, enter a name for the provider account. And I'm just gonna call this fake MPL. And the name should be entered as the provider code and then underscore and the library code. This enables Sitka support to easily identify the owning library of the EDI account when troubleshooting. In the host field, you're going to enter the requisite FTP or SCP information supplied by your provider. In the username field, enter the username supplied by your provider. In the password field, enter the password supplied by your provider. And you will select your library as the account owner you can leave account and last activity empty. In the provider field, you will enter the code used in Evergreen for your provider. And in the path field, you will enter the path supplied by your provider. In the incoming directory field, you will enter the incoming directory supplied by your provider. and then you will click save. You can leave the vendor account number and vendor assigned code on, uh, at blank, and then just click on save. Now the uh, EDI account has been created, you'll need to assign it to the vendor or the provider. So just under the provider, click on the hyperlinked provider link, and um, we're using provider number two. And under EDI default, you will just select the new account that you just created. So we're selecting the one here that's fake underscore MPL. 
and then we just click on save. And so that has tied the provider record and the EDI account uh, together. Once you have completed these steps, please email the new account name to sitka at bc.libraries.coop so we can complete the back end setup. Thank you for watching this video and for more information, please visit the BC Libraries Cooperative website.